Hey everyone, Joellen here, and welcome to Washington Watercolor. For today's demonstration, I thought it would be a lot of fun to paint this giraffe. I really love the pattern on the neck and the little dark nubs on the horns, and I love that overbite. Here is a list of the materials I'll be using for today's demonstration. I'll begin by lightly drawing a basic outline. In my basic block in, I visualize the head to be a triangular shape and the neck to have somewhat of a curved cylindrical shape. Once I'm happy with the overall shape, I'll add in the eyes and refine my outline. Finally, I'll add in the spots. As I'm drawing them, I'll think about their movement as they go around the topography of the form. When my drawing's all set, I'll use my spray bottle to wet my palette. As you can see, I have some leftover paint on my palette and I just like to work this way and the water will just revive the paint and I'll be able to reuse the colors from my last painting. I mix together lemon yellow, Windsor orange, quinacridone magenta, and a little bit of Windsor violet and a lot of water. I want this first coat to be fairly thin. Using my Neptune quill brush, I paint the entire giraffe with this very light wash. I really like using this Neptune brush because it does carry a lot of water, which allows me to work wet into wet paint. I'll pick up a little bit of Windsor Red with Lemon Yellow, and this time I'll work wet into wet and just paint the face a little bit darker. And I'll be sure to put this warm mixture down the shadowed side of the neck. Continuing to work wet into wet paint, I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue to the shadowed side of the giraffe. I 
I'll add a little bit of burnt sienna to the muzzle, continuing to work it up into the face of the giraffe. I add it to the mane and then also to the horns. Then I mix a little bit of raw umber in with my burnt sienna and I'll just drop that back into the muzzle. I want that muzzle to be fairly dark. changing from ultramarine blue to thalo blue. I just think thalo blue is going to work a little bit better in my painting. And I'll just continue to drop this in. Now it does get a little bit tricky because working wet into wet um, blossoms can happen very easily. So I want to be careful that as I'm adding color I'm not overly adding a lot of water to my brush. I really love using my Windsor Orange in the reflected light area of the giraffe. So underneath the neck, it just gives the giraffe or the neck a beautiful glow. My approach with this painting is to work the whole form to make it feel round. And I know maybe you might want to put the spots on right away, but actually that's kind of the last thing I'm going to do. I think it's more important to really build this whole base before going in for those details. I'm adding some touches of purple to the neck. Um, he is definitely a colorful giraffe. Finally, I'm going to give my painting a dry. The horns are fairly dark and I'm going to work one horn at a time using a combination of raw umber and thalo blue. Let's drop in a little bit of Windsor Orange into the wet paint. Using my combination of raw umber and thalo blue, I'll then add in the ear and the mane. Um, remember to also, while it's wet, add in a little bit of your orange or burnt sienna to give it a nice colorful look. Using that same dark combination, I'll then start to create the eye. I'll first create the area where we'd see the iris and then I'll think about the eyelid and I'll actually think about the whole eye socket and I'm going to vary my paint consistency a little bit areas where it's darker I'll have a thicker paint and areas that I just want to suggest maybe the ridge of the eye socket I'll keep my paint a little bit lighter I'll now add the nostril and a suggestion of the mouth I'll continue to slowly darken areas, paying careful attention to the face.
Okay, overall I'm pretty happy with my underpainting. Okay, here we go. Now it's time to have fun. It's time to paint in the spots. And I'm going to start with a combination of my umber along with my um, burnt sienna. This way I think it'll have a nice kind of warm tone. Now remember, as these um, spots wrap around, the areas that are facing the light are going to be a little bit lighter than the areas that are in the shadow shape. So remember, you need to vary the value of the spots. I'm adding little droplets of water next to little pieces of the edge on the spots. I just think it's a nice way to soften some of the areas and give a nice watercolor look without seeming too rigid. Finally, I'll add the spots onto the face. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you give it a try. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. See you again soon!